Good morning, everyone, and welcome to What's New Wednesday at Kimberbell. How are you today? Hope things are going well for you this lovely Wednesday morning. Who do we have here? Let's see. We've got Dina from Denton, Texas. Good morning. Good morning, Donna from Florida and Nina. Hi. Uh, good morning, C. Lombard and Wanda from West Texas. Hi, Donna from Connecticut and Amy. <laughs> I love this. She says, hello from Monroe, Washington. Feels like a great day to sew. Mm, doesn't it though, Amy? I couldn't agree more. Hi, Ellen from, or he didn't say where you're from, Ellen, but hello to you. And Kathy from Ohio, Yvette from Illinois, Sheila from West Virginia. Hi, Kat. Always good to see you. And Kim, hello from Maryland, she says. Judy from South Dakota and sandy from arizona good morning my friends how are you today oh my goodness it's been a busy busy week at kimberbell lots of things going on can't wait to share them all with you in due time right um one of the things that i personally have been really busy with is filming some technique tutorials for cup of cheer <laughs> How many of you are working on Cup of Cheer? I have seen and been so amazed by how many people have been uh, actually finishing Cup of Cheer. Whoa, you're blowing me away. I <laughs> think you're blowing us all away. Wow. Um, amazing. Amazing. You guys are making them. You're finishing them. You're getting them done. And we are just at the beginning of August. How crazy is that? But you're having a, a great experience that makes me so happy. And, um, you know, it, it's just something that I got a whole lot of fun um, making the tutorials feel for. And I can't wait to share those with you. They will probably, they're now in the editing phase. So Andrew's working really hard on them. And I'm guessing that we'll have, we'll have most of them probably next week sometime. That's my guess. Don't hold me to it. That's my guess. Um, and then maybe um, maybe a one or a couple this week. By the end of the week, we'll see. So anyway, but the good news about it is that even if you're done with your quilt, um, these are technique videos. And so I'm going to share with you a technique and then a block that helps demonstrate that technique. So therefore, even beyond the cup of cheer quilt, you're going to be able to use these videos for all kinds of other projects, which is kind of fun. I have to show you though. This is the one I just finished the house, one of the houses, but can you believe that door? If you have made this, were you just like blown away when it came time to adding the door and behind the door is a pocket that you can slip like a little note into. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Oh, I've got all kinds of ideas I wanna do with these extra blocks, not only for the quilt itself, but now I'm thinking I gotta do some other things with it. For example, have you made the zippered uh, present yet on the quilt? The zippered present, a little cute lace zipper. As I was making that and filming the tutorial, I was like, okay, not only am I going to make this for the quilt itself, but how fun would that be for like birthday presents or something? When it's someone's birthday that month, I could have like a little bench buddy sitting on my shelf with the present on there with a little zipper. And then maybe in the zipper is a gift card or something like that. I don't know. Just thinking of some other ideas to do with cup of cheer blocks. I'd love to hear your ideas too. All right. So that is that. Um, I thought I would start off. We've got lots to cover today. Um, but I wanted to just quickly tap on one of the things that came up on Facebook. Let me see if I can find, find it here. Um, that came up on Facebook probably, I think it was like this weekend sometime, that someone was asking about the filler blocks and doing the background quilting on the filler blocks. Now, the good news is, is that I'm, I have a whole video on it that was filmed for this um, series of tutorials. So watch for that probably next week it'll come out. So if you have not done background quilting on your filler blocks yet, what I'm talking about is that, as you know, at Kimberbell, we oversize blocks because, um, and then we, we quilt on them and then we put the appliques on them, but we make them oversized so that 
after the process of adding like an applique on it, that process like shrinks those fibers in of the fabric. And so you never start with the exact same block as, or you never end with the exact same block that you started with, right? Okay, so we cut them oversized, we do our quilting, our embroidery, and then we cut it down to size, right? But on our filler blocks, we actually um, tell you to cut them to the exact size and, um, and to use what we call technique two, technique two uh, for doing those filler blocks. And I'll tell you, technique two does work. It, it works actually really well. Um, if you want to oversize your, your cuts, that's totally fine. But the reason why technique two works is because you don't have any additional designs on top of that fabric block, if that makes sense. Okay. Again, all the details are coming out in when I when we release the set of tutorials and it'll make a whole lot more sense back back then. But I wanted to show you real quick some experimentation I did this week when I read that uh, Facebook post because I thought, gosh, you know, we've tested this process. We know it works. I've done all kinds of background quilting blocks with the same technique and I know it works. So I thought I'd share with you some of my findings. All right. So, and then we'll go into some other fun stuff like, hey, Merry Christmas, y'all, right? Okay, so let me show you real quick a picture. Um, you know, when you're doing your filler blocks, and we do this a lot, whether it's cup of chair or any kind of uh, pillow or quilt, um, there's these filler blocks and you could certainly quilt them one at a time um, in your hoop. But hey, if you have a larger hoop, why not use it to your advantage, right? So I put in multiples. I think I have seven different blocks in there so that I could just uh, save on stabilizer. So there's a little tip for you. Um, but what I did, here's my little experiment. I decided, okay, would it make a difference? I'm not sure, but... I became curious, as my sister likes to say. Become curious and say to yourself, would it make a difference if something, if the tension was pulling differently on my background quilting? And guess what? At least for me, it made a slight difference. And I'll show you my findings here. Um, I tried a machine wound bobbin in my in that first pink block, and then in the green block, I didn't change anything except I used a pre-wound bobbin there, okay? So I thought hmm, maybe that would change it something. And this doesn't mean it's going to happen for all machine brands either. My particular machine, I've realized through experiments that the, the uh, background quilting does so much better, like more beautifully done when I have a machine wound bobbin rather than a pre-wound bobbin. That, that at first hurt my heart because trust me, I love the pre-wound bobbins, but I thought let's give it a try. So sure enough, let's look at the back here. Oh, I, my, my picture's uh, on that side, but you can see there, I've got my pre-wound bobbin. Do you see the little stitches that are, that are being pulled to the back? That is what we might call eyelashes right <laughs> my friend Jeanette she's like oh yeah those are called eyelashes I'm like I like it that makes sense they look like eyelashes and that's because um th the tension just wasn't right when it came to having a pre-wound bobbin with the background quilting but then when I used my machine wound version of the bobbin the tension looked beautiful it stitched beautifully and so there I I figured okay that's there you go. Now, remember which was the pre-wound and which was the machine wound? Do you see there's an ever so slight difference? That's because in the green one, that was done with a pre-wound and it pulled it enough. Remember those little eyelashes? It pulled it enough that it did just a smidgen shrink it. Is it a huge significant amount? No, it's probably about a 16th of an inch, really. Um, yeah, probably, but I, I, don't need, I don't even dare say an eighth of an inch. It's just not there. It's not there. But maybe a 16th of an inch difference. 
But for me, that's, I said, okay, I'm going to see what the rest of my blocks end up, you know, looking like if I use just the machine lab. Again, that was for my machine. Try it out on your machine and see if it makes a difference. Give it a whirl, like I like to say, and experiment and see what happens. Um, I thought, okay, well, I did it on a small block. How about a larger block? But here you can see, well, let me back up here. There I used my machine wound bobbin to do the background quilting. I then turned it to the back. There's my machine wound bobbin. And doesn't that look good on the back? Looks fantastic, right? And then sure enough, it finished at the exact size, like exact six and a half by six and a half inch size on that particular block. Let's look at what happened with that same design when I used a pre-wound bobbin. And spoiler alert, this particular one didn't matter. And that's because, I think it's because they were straight lined quilting designs and not uh, curves, okay? Sometimes I think it, when it comes to curves, maybe you get a little bit more pull. Interesting, right? So on the pre-wound bobbin, sure enough, I, I did the whole thing. I looked at the back, looks really good, right? So then I'm thinking, well, maybe my, my idea is not that big of a deal. And I measured it, sure enough, six and a half by six and a half inches, but that wasn't good enough for me. I was like, okay, one more try with a kind of more swirl design. I did it with a longer block and I did it with the uh, stockings. Again, pre-wound versus machine. Here we go. So there on the left in the pink is the made with a machine wound bobbin In the green was with a pre-wound bobbin. <laughs> You're like, okay, I, I hope this is interesting to you guys because it sure was interesting to me. In the end, the pre-wound just pulled it by a very slight, slight amount. But as you can see, there was just a tiny difference. So what would be my suggestions then for getting technique two to work? Well, that's my teaser. I want you to watch next week when these videos are released because I'm gonna give you a few extra tips. They're not earth shattering tips because just if you were to quilt your blocks as instructed in the download with the background quilting designs with technique two, you're going to be just fine. No one has cut anything wrong. Certainly, if you want to oversize cut your fabrics um, and use technique one, absolutely. You could totally do that, you know, and that's not a problem at all. But um, technique two can work and does work. And so anyway, there you have it. Um, yeah, Tracy says her machine is the opposite. Yeah, that it, it's funny because even from brand to brand, um, things are different. Like we use every brand of machine there is and various models within that brand at Kimberbell, we test on everything. So when that question came up, I was like, you know what, we, we've we tested this. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, then certainly, uh, you know, I, I wanted to test some more, but it does work. It does work. It just, I, there might be something going on with some tension, maybe, you know, I just, I don't know, but my tips are coming next week in an extra video and they have mainly to do with, um, how you're taping it. Okay. So try it out. Now, um, Lynn says, this is a good question, Lynn. Let me bring it up. She says, if you choose to oversize cut, would you have enough fabrics for the entire quilt? That's a good question. So Lynn, think about this. Um, first of all, if you have a single block, then oversize cutting it even by half an inch would be great if there's enough fabric. When we put together the fabric requirements, um, sometimes if we went up on those filler blocks that we call them, if we went up in size, that might bump you up into a new fabric category of like maybe something could have been done in a fat eighth and now it bumps it up to a fat quarter. Now you have all this extra fabric. Um, because technique two works, we don't want you to buy extra fabric that you don't have to, right? But if, um, if you have the fabric, certainly try it out and, um, and, make it work for you. But I will say 
that only works if it's a single block. Say, for example, there are times when you sew blocks together. I don't have it right here. Where you sew blocks together and then you do your background quilting on top. Um, you, you wouldn't want to oversize cut all those because now it doesn't fit. Does that make sense? It doesn't fit the way you want it to in your quilt. So, you know, it's, it's totally up to you. Um, yeah, Amber says there's plenty of fabric to cut a bit larger. There may be in some places, but there might not be another. So just check it out. And of course it depends on if you purchase a kit, if you have extra fabric, all those things. But what I wanna say and just reiterate is that if you cut your little filler blocks to the size we recommend in the book and you use technique two, you're gonna be just fine. I promise you. We wouldn't lead you astray, right? There's just a few tips. And so I shared one of them about the bobbin, um, changing some things. Um, I'll just tell you another quick tip is to actually, you know, a lot of times we spray starch our fabric and we put like the fusible backing on the back. Do that before you actually cut the block down to size. Because, for example, again, doing a little experimenting here. I thought, what if I sprayed my fabric first and then cut it? Guess what happens when fabric gets wet? It shrinks even just the little, little, littlest a bit, right? So I would suggest actually spraying your fabric first, cutting it to the size you want, and then putting on your fusible backing and then going from there. All right, so there you go. Um, a few extra tips. And I loved that that was brought up on Facebook because, you know, it got me thinking and it made me go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this out again. I know they've done it in testing, but I want to see for myself once again, that it can work. And the good news is whew, it does. It does. And we can, I can offer some additional tips next week when those videos come out. So there you go. Keep the questions coming. We love them. All right. Um, and then of course, make sure you're using the right way to bobbin thread for your machine too. That's, that's always important as well. And you will know that from your machine manual, okay? Um, there's different weights of thread, whether you have like a combo machine or meaning a sewing and a machine embroidery machine together or versus just an embroidery machine. So find out those things and um, see if it makes a difference, okay? All right, I can't wait for all those tutorials to come out. I think there's like 11 or 12 of them. So I hope it's helpful. I'm excited for you to see them. All right, next, let's talk about <laughs> something we've been teasing for a while now, and it's finally available. Whoop. Yeehaw! Merry Christmas, y'all. All y'all, right? Merry Christmas, all y'all. <laughs> Merry Christmas, y'all, and to y'all, a good night. How many of you feel like this is your pillow. This is speaking your language because you love it. You love maybe, um, you know, a Western theme, a Southwest theme, a, hey, you just like country and, or maybe it's not your cup of tea, but it's someone else's uh, thing that, you know, maybe you live in the desert. Oh, look at that cacti, cactus with cac cactus. Yeah. <laughs> Um, more than one cactus is a cacti. Is that right? All right. And then we've got the little stockings, which of course are boots. And then you piece these blocks in the hoop. Oh, and the cowboy Santa with his little uh, cuddle fabric beard. Oh my gosh. Look at his little kerchief hanging off of there. Wow. 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 Sparkly lights on that cactus. We got a nice gold leather star. And then of course the real rope. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Jenna says she's doing this for her daughter-in-law from Texas. Oh my gosh. She's going to love it. So this is available right now as we speak on Kimberbell.com. And if you go to products, then go to digital downloads. That's what it is. Digital downloads. There you will find the machine embroidery version of 
Merry Christmas, y'all. It is available now. Now, if you have a favorite cool shop out there that is an affiliate of Kimberbell, please go. When you before you make the purchase, go through their affiliate link. They would so appreciate it. Um, uh, to have your support. Um, certainly, that's something that, um, you know, they will share with you. They um, oftentimes you'll find it on the shop's uh, website or in their emails or on their social media. They'll let you know if they're an affiliate and that they are happy to, to send, send people over here to get this cute little guy. Oh, my goodness. Look at his velveteen hat. Are you kidding me? So much fun. Of course, this comes, uh, this is based off of the original sewing pattern, which was a 40 by 40 wall hanging um, that we did many, many, many years ago. Probably, um, I guess it's like 2014, maybe. Um, and it was available for sewing. So here's the good news. If you don't machine embroider and you would rather sew this, um, we actually still have it available as a sewing pattern. It is for the larger wall quilt, though. It is a 40 by 40 quilt. So here's what I want you to do. I wish my second screen was working today. Something went wonky. But here's what I want you to do. If you machine embroider, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Kimberbell.com. You're going to click on products at the top, then digital downloads. And that is where you're going to find the machine embroidery version of this pillow. Oh, by the way, you will need a six by 10 hoop for this. Okay. This one's a little bit bigger that you'll need because of our Santa. Um, if you are looking for the sewing version, the wall quilt. Yeah, we, Beverly, I'm so sorry. We don't have the wall quilt in embroidery. But if you didn't want to use it as a pillow, you could certainly make this into a wall quilt. That'd be cute. A little mini quilt. But if you want the sewing version, it's going to be found in a little different of a place because it would be considered a vault item since it's from 2013, 14, something like that. So what you would do to find the sewing version is go to Kimberbell.com, click on products at the top, then go to the vault, and that's where you're going to see the sewing version, all right? Nancy says, my son and granddaughter in Texas, my brother in Arizona, woo hoo. <laughs> oh, Nancy, you're going to have so much fun with this. Now, here's the other cool, cool uh, news. The background quilting files for this are also available. And look at the background quilting files for this. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Look at the cactus and the presents, and we put it on this solid brown fabric so you can really see it so well. Is that not the cutest thing that our team put together for you? And not only that, do you see the inner border? Look real close at the inner border. It says, Merry <laughs> Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas, y'all. Um, that's super cute. So that goes all the way around the four edges. And then there's like a cowboy, let's see, I think they're cowboy boots. Yes, cowboy boots and hats. So even beyond this pillow, you could certainly use those background quilting things for all kinds of other projects, right? Little cowboy hats and cowboy boots, little sheriff stars. Oh my gosh. It just couldn't get any cuter, you guys. It just can't. So the good news about that is that the background quilting is also available today. And it's 20% off for the month of August. So go and grab it fast. <laughs> because you're going to want your 20% off. Um, save yourself some money there. And get the background quilting for this pillow. All right? But again, don't think of just the pillow. Think of it way beyond that with all the cute things you can make with the background quilting designs. Oh my gosh, so much fun. So there you go, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, Gail says, need those designs even without the pillow. Isn't that the great thing, Gail, about these kinds of designs? I'm actually gonna talk about that a little bit in when we do Sew and Tell with Kimberbell. But these designs alone, would be so cute for all kinds of other projects. Think beyond the pillow, right? Think beyond the pillow. Yeah, Debbie says, already got it. Debbie, I, I expect that you're gonna have that done and posted by tonight, right? <laughs> Maybe. 
Okay, I'll let you have till tomorrow to do it. Okay, Debbie? <laughs> All right. Yeah, C. Lombard says, so much cuteness, even the background quilting. I know. Our, you guys, our digitizers, they hit it out of the park every time. I just love those ladies. So much fun. Now, uh, let's see. Betty says, is there a kit for this? That's a good question, Betty. There are a lot of shops out there that um, are selling kits for it. We let shops know about this several months ago and said, if you're interested in, you know, kits uh, for this, here's, here's how you put them together. And so find a shop out there who um, is putting together kits for it. There are, there are many of them that are. So check them out. All right. Okay, let's see. Betty Jo, she says, my friends goes to the Bridger Rendezvous every year. Super cowboy fans might have to get this. Yeah. You know what, you guys? I don't even decorate with cowboy stuff. It's just, you know, I, I, I can appreciate it, but I don't decorate that way. But this has me saying, okay, yep, this is going up this Christmas because it is just too stinking cute. All right. Love it. Yeah. Linda says this, this one is really special. Love Western stuff. Oh, I'm so glad Linda. So happy to hear that. So if you are interested in a sew along, I know last week I showed you a, a, um, a little uh, graphic that I said, Oh, screenshot this so that you'll know when the sew along is. And now I'm going to have to change it up on you just one more time. I promise. Um, it's, Pretty close to what last week's was, but this is, these are the new dates. Something came up where I have to be out of town one of those days. So we're going to do it in a two day so long instead of a one day so long. I'm trying to find my image here, my new image for you to screenshot. There you go. It is August 24th and 26th. Now, before I said it was August 22nd, 24th, and 26th, I'm now going to be out of town on the 22nd. So, therefore, we're going to do it just Wednesday and Friday at 12 noon Mountain Time. You'll find it on our main Facebook page where you're at right now or on our YouTube channel. Either way. And uh, we'll just have a whole lot of fun, y'all. See what I did there? Okay. So, uh, the win it's a Wednesday and a Friday. Now, are we going to get them all done during that time? Uh, no. But <laughs> as we do in lunch hour so long, so we just try to have some fun together. I share some tips and tricks and techniques. You can ask questions live. It's a whole lot of fun. So I hope you'll join me. If you cannot join live, that's totally okay. You know how we do it. We always make sure these are recorded. So you can find it later at any time on YouTube or Facebook and uh, sew along with us when the time is right for you. All right? Okay. Now, with that all being said, let's talk about Sew and Tell with Kimber Bell. I should, I should come up with a little jingle, right? <laughs> How about this? <laughs> That's all. That's as good as a gift, folks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so until with Kimber Bell. Oh, my gosh. You guys, I don't know if you realize how much it warms our hearts. Literally warms our hearts at Kimber Bell. I know that sounds a little corny, but it's true. When we see you posting pictures of things you are making that so many people behind the scenes are working so hard to create for you. Um, they love what they do and they love who they do it for. And so that is you. And when you make these projects and post them on Facebook, it just makes our day. So many of them, like people will screenshot them and go, oh my gosh, did you see this on Facebook? Did you see that on Facebook? Because they're so proud of you and they're proud of what they've been able to accomplish by putting these themes together for all of our enjoyment. In fact, when I, um, this is just a little side note, but even as I'm going through the directions and making um, these tutorials for Cup of Cheer, I just sat back and I was like, I have the most amazing team behind me. Like, they are incredible. And how they come up with some of these things just blow my mind. And how they make it so easy for all of us to understand just is truly remarkable. So shout out to them. I just want to say thanks to our product development team for making all these things possible and you for making them. So let's take a look at what you're doing. All right. She says, I finished. I can't. Oh, let's see. 
I can't even see your name. I'm so sorry because it's not showing up on my screen, but you can see the name, I think. She says, I finished this baby blanket using CBTs. You know by now, CBT stands for clear blue tiles. Uh, she says, I love how it turned out. It will be gifted to my husband's supervisor and family. Okay, those are gorgeous colors. I love the quilting on it. I love that you can gift this, get it done and gift it. And um, you did it all on your embroidery machine. Let's take another look here. She says, I love being able to finish my projects with the clear blue tiles. Yes, indeed. Oh, I wish I could see your name behind my screen. That's okay. You guys can see it. Beautiful job there. I absolutely love the fabrics you chose, first of all. And look at that darling centerpiece on it. And of course, she finished it with clear blue tiles. This makes me so happy, you guys. That's what it's all about, getting our projects to the finish line with clear blue tiles. Let's take a look at another one. This didn't get finished for July, but my daughter loves it so much. It may stay out all year. I used Patriotic One clear blue tiles to quilt it. What a breeze. Oh my gosh, that's cute. Cute, cute, cute. And you know what I love, and I've said this before, Clear Blue Tiles goes beyond Kimberbell projects. It goes for, any, these are not Kimberbell projects that I just showed you, and yet it works. It's a system that works for getting your background quilting done all on your embroidery machine. Doesn't matter how big or small your project is. I love it. Oh, here's a closer look at that Patriotic One design. She's got some rockets in there, some fireworks, some swirls. Looks fantastic. All right, here she says, candle mats for everyone. I love the perfectly pieced and clear blue tiles. Having so much fun over here using all my scraps. Yeah, this comes from Me Time, which you know is a separate brand from Kimberbell. But wow, I love how this block came together. I love that she then quilted it with, you know, clear blue tiles. We gotta love that. And another one using clear blue tiles. She says, pineapple time. <laughs> Oh man, pineapple time is right. I want that. That, my friends, is a bench buddy from Kimberbell. This is from, oh, let's see. Let me see. Uh, May, June, July, and August collection of bench buddies comes that cute little pineapple. But then look at the table topper she made um, with the swirl design. And then if you look even closer at the borders, you're going to see that she used the bumble bumble. bumble B design using clear blue tiles. Beautiful, beautiful choice of fabrics too. All right, here we've got a gal. I wish I could call you by name, guys. I'm so sorry. She says, loving Kimberbell, used designs from Vintage Boardwalk, Red, White, and Bloom, 4th of July, spring showers, two scoops, lucky us, mug works for, and buttons always in season. So much fun. Okay, you are on a roll and it looks fantastic. And this makes me happy. It's kind of like what I was, someone mentioned earlier. With these blocks, she can see using them for other things besides just that pillow. Well, look what this gal did. Let's take a closer look. The, we're, we're gonna play like a game of I Spy Kimberbell, right? <laughs> who can name that block? <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a who can name that block. Where did? the double bicycle um along the bottom come from anyone do 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 post it in the comments <laughs> if you know that one uh tell me let's see where did the the flowers come from in the vase in the left corner hmm let's take another look this is an the i spy game of kimberbell where did the life is sweet lemonade block come from and where did the Ferris wheel block come from? You know, you are a true Kimberbella when you know the answer to these things. <laughs> oh my goodness. We could, we could come up with all sorts of games, couldn't we? On Kimberbell um, trivia. Maybe we should do that one of these times. <laughs> all right. Here's another one. I think I'm pretty sure... This all came, I see I'm testing myself now. I think it all came from vintage, not vintage flora, not vintage flora, vintage boardwalk. Pretty certain they all came from vintage boardwalk, but I love how you mixed and matched those blocks from a really big size quilt to make it a little bit smaller into a pillow. Fantastic job. And finally, she put together a whole bunch of 4th of July designs. 
And I think a lot, quite a few of those came from a Kimberbell 4th of July that you can find in the vault. Really, really great stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, moving on to Halloween. Can you believe it? She says, my first project done on my new Solaris. Made an extra block to create a wall hanging. It has some flaws, but I smile every time I look at it. That's what I love. I Who cares about the flaws? No one can see that, right? It looks fantastic. And I love that she used, this is Twilight Boulevard, um, which was originally a bench pillow. And she's turned it into, let's see, it's a little wall hanging. I love what you did with that. Let's take a closer look at the lights. Did you know, here's a little trivia for you. <laughs> did you know that Twilight Boulevard was the very first uh, quilt pattern, pillow pattern um, from Kimberbell that used fairy lights? There you have it. I remember being in that meeting where we were discussing all the different ways to make those lights happen. We finally landed on one and wow, what a showstopper, isn't it? All right, here's another one from Twilight Boulevard. She says, Twilight Boulevard pillow all finished. What a cute project. The Kimberbell bench pillows are just adorable. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're so happy that you love them. And those lights just take it over the top, don't they? <laughs> Speaking of background quilting, she says, love clear blue tiles, doing border strips for candy corn quilt shop. And she's doing two borders at once. Look at the candy cord quilting. That is an exclusive design that comes with the clear blue tiles. Um, let's see, it's the essentials set. It's the main box set. And you'll find that just in there. So I love that you're using them for your borders. And doesn't that orange thread look perfect on the black background? Okay, couple more Halloween ones. She says, working on Halloween projects before starting Cup of Cheer. Oh, you're a good girl, man. <laughs> I just jumped right to cup of cheer. Forget Halloween. I'll get to that eventually, right? But you, you, you're doing it in order. I'm proud of you. Um, she says, candy corn shop is next. Oh, I'm so excited for you. That's a fun one. The, the candy corn quilt shop for sure. Um, let's see. Isn't that cute? That is home is where the haunt is. That is found in the vault. And another piece of Kimberbell trivia for you. Do you know... The story behind that main quilt, one of these days, if you don't know, I'll, I'll share it with you sometime, maybe as Halloween gets closer, but it was the very first quilt found in quilt shops all across the country. Very first quilt. It was a 40 by 40 size. We have since reimagined it, if you will, down to a pillow size for the memory machine. Pretty fun. And one more here. Well, a couple more. We've got this one for fall. We're not all about Halloween here at Kimberville. We've got some fall themes in the works too, which I'm super excited about for next year. But this one is the Welcome Autumn. And I love that she added some tabs to the back so that she can use it as a wall hanging. She says she uses it at her clinic. I love that. Thank you for sharing that idea. Here's a closer look at the tabs that she made. Isn't that a great idea? So she can take what would normally be looked at as a bench pillow and turn it into a mini wall hanging. And she just switches it out with those cute little tabs uh, hung there on the wall. I love it. And then of course, I noticed the background quilting. You used clear blue tiles to quilt that with our uh, one of our autumn designs um, found at Kimberbell.com. That's awesome. It's got acorns, it's got leaves. That's one of my favorites. All right, now there was one other, oh my goodness, did I not show this? <gasps> I think I forgot. Oh, no, here. No. Oh, did I forget to upload that? Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. I wanted to show you something really cool, but I bet you've seen it on the Kimber Bellas and Fellas page. Let me look real quick. Did I forget to upload that one? It was on my mind and I was like, OK, we got to show that. <sighs> well. We're not going to be able to show the one that someone made from the Kimber Bellas and Fellows page, but you're not, you're going to know what I'm talking about here. Let me show you what the actual project was that she, she created this from, and then I'll tell you what she did to make it even, even cuter than the original. Let's take a look. Here is the October 31st pillow. How many of you guys have done this or are planning on doing it this month? This is actually a digital dealer exclusive. It's a pillow. It uses leather. Look at that black leather in the background. 
And then it's got this really cute little orange glitter spider hanging from there. And then we flange the edges. Oh my goodness, look at that. Here it is on decor. I, I think it, I gotta make one. I haven't made it yet, but I, I want my mantle to look just like that picture. <laughs> How's that? I'm, I, I'm thinking, yep, yeah, that's what I'm going after, right? I want to have the cute little spiders because I only like spiders when they're plastic and it's Halloween. That's, that's all, right? But isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh. If you are looking for that design, here's one more picture. It's not too late to get it from a shop who is selling digital dealer exclusives. What is Digital Dealer Exclusives? Well, it's a way for you to get these exclusive designs that only these participating shops can offer to you. They offer it in clubs, in classes, as downloads. And so what you have to do is you find a shop that is doing Digital Dealer Exclusives and you say, I would love to sign up. Now, some shops do this as like a yearly program and some shops do it as a monthly program. Some shops do it as a pick and choose which one you want. And some shops do all of the above, give you options, right? So you decide how you want to do it. Find a shop that's doing digital dealer exclusives. Many of them are also offering kits and um, classes. And so anyway, Check them out. When you sign up with them, you will also um, be able to, let's see, you'll sign up through them and then you'll find it after sign up and after the shop says, yep, it's ready to go. Um, you'll actually find it in your Kimberbell library. So you go to Kimberbell.com, click into your library and there you will find your design. Okay, I know what you, you Betty, she guessed which one I was hoping to put up. She says, I love the person's pillow in the glow in the dark thread. So cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> I had it on my phone to share with you guys. And now I don't know where it went, but oh, here we go. How, how's this? Amy did it. Okay. Can you guys see that? Look at the glow in the dark thread. Is that not the cutest thing you ever did see? She's totally inspired me. She says, my son loves Halloween, so I couldn't help but stitch this up today. I used glow in the dark thread to make it more fun. Uh, yeah, you did. You made it 10 times more fun. The spider is afraid of the dark and hides. Uh, just waiting for the flange and backing fabric to get here, and then she's going to be finished. Let's just take a look at that again. And if you see that on the Kimber Bellas and, Face Kimber Bellas and Fellas Facebook page, make sure and uh, like it because, oh, my gosh, it's so cute. Anyway. Loved it. Amy, you totally inspired me. I'm going to I'm going to do that myself. Anyway, super cute ideas. Find a quilt shop that is doing digital dealer exclusives and it doesn't have to be a local quilt shop. These quilt shops because it's digital, this is a new program this year because it's digital, they can offer it to you online no matter where you live, which is really good news if you don't have a quilt shop that's participating near you or maybe you don't live near a quilt shop or for whatever reason, you're not able to get it. Find a shop online and they can help you out. They'd love to support you and earn your business. All right. Okay. So whew, that's digital dealer exclusives. It's kind of funny to go from, <laughs> from Christmas to Merry, the Merry Christmas, y'all, to now Halloween, right? But we're I, I'm kind of getting in the mode because while it's still hot outside, we're having a couple of rainy days here and there. And before you know it, sorry to say, but before you know it, Halloween is going to be just right around the corner, right? So um, I wanted to share with you an event that my guess is many of you have taken this event. But if you haven't yet, it's not too late. And you know that our events eventually retire. So if you get a chance, I would love for you to find a shop Come this August, well, this month, and September, even until October, who's doing Home Sweet Haunted Home. How many of you out there have taken Home Sweet Haunted Home? This is a two-day event, and I'm actually going to be talking about it for the next couple of weeks because I really, really want you to make these projects. If you love Halloween, 
you're going to love this event. If you're not so sure if you love Halloween, I still think you're going to like the event because they're not like creepy projects. They're cute projects, right? They're, they're, they're sweet, not spooky, maybe spooky sweet. I don't know. They're just cute. And so I'm not into like the, the craziness of Halloween, but if it's a cute Halloween, I'm all over it. Okay, so I would love for you to check out Home Sweet Haunted Home. If you're wondering what in the world are you going to make, what am I talking about? Well, today I'm going to show you one of those videos. Um, let's just pretend, shall we, that we are on a ride at Disneyland. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this, you'll see what I mean when you watch the video. It'll just make you smile because there's some kind of spooky themes going on in this person's home with an embroidery machine um, with Home Sweet Haunted Home. And then, of course, the projects are being shown there. You're going to make mm, five or six projects, I think, in that event over two days. It's just way too much fun. Let's take a look. <music> Our guests have just arrived. Don't be alarmed when you see a machine stitching to a ghostly hum. This is home sweet haunted home where everyone is welcome. These beautiful bats are delightful decor for pillows and more. Stitch a couple for your flyaway bats throw pillow. Then create a whole colony for a variety of Halloween projects. Embroidery leather, felt, glitter, and lace. Bats swoop to a pillow and stitch into place. Black as midnight, each bat is made from a different Kimberbellishment or technique. Kimberbell's pumpkins grow right in the hoop. Quilt the velveteen fabric with a spooktacular pattern. Then. Form the pumpkin by gathering the top and bottom. Fairy lights cast an enchanting glow from Kimberbell's Haunted Home 3D House with a black cat button and sparkly jack-o'-lantern. This dimensional project is a Halloween treat. Escape, if you dare, to Kimberbell's Dead and Breakfast Inn. This ghoulish getaway has all the comforts of home. <laughs> including mylar windows, an applique glitter door, and walls of shiny embroidery leather. No need for terror. You'll have everything you need to conjure five bewitching projects in the Kimberbell event bag at this two-day event. Make your house a home sweet haunted home with Kimberbell. <laughs> oh <laughs> that's pretty cute isn't it that's pretty cute oh my gosh if you could see the behind the scenes of making that video it would just make your day in fact marketing team at kimberbell maybe uh jenny could do a blog post on the behind the scenes of the making of that video because let's just say we had to have some like people in green bodysuits so that they uh, could disappear, if that makes sense? Yeah. Anyway, so much fun. Um, we would love to have you be a part of it. Did you see the pillow? The pillow with the lace bats. You make a glitter bat, a lace bat, a leather bat, and they all go flying across the pillow. That's the kind of pillow that like you would find at a high-end boutique store. That's the kind of pillow that like just makes you go, ooh, I like it. <laughs> and I like that it's just simple. You're learning new techniques. It has some pom-pom trim on, on each corner, some big black pom-poms that come with the project as well. So much fun, right? Um, there's the tea towel. There's the light up house. Um, what else am I missing? There's a few. There's quite a few of them, quite a few themes in there. Um, again, these, these events are limited based on the quantities of project kits we have left. So find a quilt shop that still is doing this this year because I don't, 
I'm not going to say it's going to be around next year. I'm not going to say it's not going to be around next year. I just don't know. It depends on the popularity. So find out because they are, these shops are ready to give you a real treat, a real treat um, for attending their event. You get it all packaged up in this fun project bag. If you are brand new to machine embroidery, this is the event for you. If you've done machine embroidery for years, this is the event for you. You can always learn something new and, of course, have a whole lot of fun. And the good news, I saw I saw that someone said, I wish I had a shop near me that did this. These shops can also do this for you virtually, online. Isn't that awesome? So if you don't live near one or you maybe you just don't want to bring your embroidery machine into a shop, find a shop that's doing it virtually. They'd be happy to help you. And they are going to become your go-to source for all things Kimberbell, machine embroidery, learning new things, all the stuff. All right. Tracy says it's really tempting. Yeah, it's it's just fun. It's just really, really fun. So check it out. Next week, I'm going to show you um, up close the projects and what comes in your project kit and such. And then the following week after that, I'm going to show you all the bonus designs that you can get um, at the event as well when you purchase in the Kimberbell pop-up shop. All right. So here's what we're going to do as a giveaway this week. We love giveaways, don't we? All you have to do is, well, I should probably tell you what the giveaway is, right? Okay. Someone, someone out there this week and next week is going to win themselves a trip to one of these events, to Home Sweet Haunted Home. If you have already registered for it, you've already signed up with a shop, or if you're thinking, well, I'm just going to hurry up and get signed up so that I make sure that, because I want to go, and I want to make sure that I, I'm able to do that this year, um, so go ahead and sign up. But if you win, yes, there are stores in Canada, by the way, Mina, uh, she asked about Canada, lots of stores in, in Canada that do Kimberbell. Um, anyway, if you win and you've already signed up, no problem. We'll just reimburse your store for your sign-up fee, okay? And then they'll reimburse you. Uh, we'll pay for it. If you haven't signed up, then you, we're, we're just going to take care of your sign-up fee um, and your kit fee, the whole kit and caboodle, right? We're going to take care of it for you. Um, so, yeah, all you need to do is just tell me in the comments at YouTube and at Facebook or either or, okay? Um, both of them, if you want two chances to win. Just tell me what your favorite project is from Home Sweet Haunted Home. Which project are you thinking, ooh, yeah, I got to do it just even for that one project. I got to do it. All right. So tell me in the comments what project really makes you go, okay, got to do it, right? <laughs> Kathy says, well, maybe there will be an event in Hawaii. Hmm, maybe. <laughs> that would be cool. Hey, if there's not, though. Find a shop online who's doing it for sure. Jennifer says, I would love to win because I have never done a Kimberbell. Oh my goodness, Jennifer. Can everyone shout out to Jennifer how fun Kimberbell events are? They're so much fun. They are not your typical event, they're not a class. We really try hard to, when we go, when these shops go through training to make it special, we want to give you like the most amazing experience. Um, and they want to give you the most amazing experience through these events. So, you know, there you go. Find a shop that, that does that. Okay, Suzanne, I love this. She says, I just saw this class in my quilt shop. So excited. Yes, go ahead and sign up for it, Suzanne. Hey, and Suzanne, if you win, we'll reimburse you and the shop. Uh, we'll take care of the ticket, right? And that includes your kit, your, you know, many shops, if they're doing it in person, a lot of times they'll do like a luncheon. And that's two days of projects that you're going to, to be making. So that's kind of cool. All right. So you have between now and tomorrow night to enter and then come Friday morning, as we always do, we post it on Facebook who the winners are. So this week, someone's going to win that trip <laughs> to Home Sweet Haunted Home. Don't forget, check out the Kimberbell website to find an event near you or an event that's hosting it online because no matter where you live, you can participate in a Kimberbell event, machine embroidery event. 
All right. Okay. So if you've never machine embroidered before and you live near a shop that does uh, machine embroidery, my hunch, my pretty darn good guess is that if you let them know that you are a brand newbie and just want to try it out, I, I can be pretty certain that they would um, provide a machine for you. They want you to have a good experience. They want you to try it out. So there you have it. Okay, Becky says, I would love to win. The 3D house is so cute and I love anything 3D. Oh, you're not a kid in Becky. And it lights up and it's got the cute little black cat button in the window. Pretty fun. Thank you, Dawn. She says, Kimberbell events are the best ever. Thank you. That means so much. We really try hard to make it a really good experience for you with all the stuff. <laughs> Betty says, Kimberbell events are the bomb. Yeah, I appreciate that. Kathleen says, gotta say, I'm doing Cup of Cheer as my first and I'm hooked. Oh, Kathleen. <laughs> yep. We're going to hook you and just keep them coming, right? Because these things are just so fun. They're fun for you. They're fun for me. We all love it. I don't, it's a great hobby. It's a great, great space to be a part of for sure. Okay. Patricia says, my favorite project is that super cute bat pillow. Love all the various versions of the bat. Oh yes, me too. In fact, um, I saw someone last year, they made the bat pillow and then they had, of course, the files to make all the lace bats on it. And so they made some additional lace bats and hung them from like a Halloween tree. That was really cute. I saw another person hang them from like a garland across their mantle. That's really cute too. All right. Um, Leslie, she says, I haven't done a Kimberbell event either. Oh, Leslie, give it a whirl, girl. <laughs> give it a whirl. It's just really, really fun. C. Lombard says, the bats. The house, so hard to choose because they are so spooky special. Oh, the other one was the the uh, tea towel that was for the dead and breakfast inn. My friend Judy says, I love the lighted house. Yeah, I do too. It's just those little things, right? The light shines through the windows, you guys. Oh my goodness. Carol says, the bats, the bats. <laughs> they would be so cute. Added to a scrappy quilt. You're not a kitten. That's a great idea, Carol. I love it. All right. <laughs> I love seeing your comments. Julie says, I love the haunted house and pillows. I did this event and loved it. Oh, see, there's a testimonial right there. Thank you, Julie Haney, for that. Yeah, there's some fun stuff in there, and you can only get it through going to the Kimberbell event that's hosting. Okay, that's being hosted. So there you go, folks. It's been an hour. Can you believe it? It's time to say goodbye. Ah, till next week. Next week, I will see you on What's New Wednesday for, at 10 o'clock Mountain Time, as always, here on the Facebook or YouTube. Hey, when you're over at the YouTube channel, Kimber Bell, over at, at YouTube, go ahead and like and subscribe or give us a thumbs up or something over there. All of the, it helps us um, reach more people. We really appreciate it. And if you liked this video, go ahead and share it as well. Thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Keep stitching out those cup of cheer projects. Keep stitching out. Merry Christmas, y'all. Don't forget, that's available today. All the things, all right? And have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.